This isn't going to be a very cohesive review, by the way. That's going to be at the end of the month. Now some people, my mother included, would think that it's rude for me to film this video while I'm eating breakfast. But, I mean, it's Saturday, Sunday. It's Sunday morning, Saturday morning. Saturday morning, and I'm hungry. And it took me all over to set this video than I thought it would. I thought that I could have this as a little treat when I was done. But now that it's done and I'm ready to record this video, I'm not gonna let it get cold because Look how pretty it is. I don't have a viewfinder, so I hope you can see, but it's really pretty. And really delicious. Mm. But, jam pancake is not why we are here today. Today, we're gonna talk about Franny and Zoe by J.D. Salinger. Um, only the first section. I read up until page, what is it? 37, which is the end of the framing section of this book. So, I believe, yeah. So, the book is divided into two stories, Franny's and Zoe's story, so I just read the Franny section, and hers is actually very short. Zoe gets all of this, and Franny just gets this, so. My plan is to finish this book this month, and every week I'm gonna give you updates. Um, so next week, I will get to page... 79, if you want to read along. So first things first, Franny in Franny and Zoe starts out with Lane, what's his last name? Lane Kotel? 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 Lane. With Lane waiting at a train station for his girlfriend to come visit him for the Yale football game. Like in the Yale game. I assume it's football. It doesn't say it, but... Lane appears to be very excited to see his girlfriend. I think it's been a while since they've seen each other. He is one of the few people who are actually waiting outside in the cold while the rest of the guys are waiting inside the heated room to smoke smoking cigarettes and whatever. He pulls out and reads a letter that his girlfriend Franny wrote to him, and it's clear that he's read, read it very many times. I love a good letter and a story. It's great. But I want to read you a part from the first paragraph of the book because I absolutely love the way that J.D. Salinger writes. I've loved him since... Loved him. That's serious. I've loved his writing style since I was in college, where we read nine stories for my creative writing and senior seminar. And that's actually why I got this book. My professor gave it to me as a graduation gift. So, I want to read this section from the first paragraph that literally just made me have to put the book down and just freak out a little bit because he is such a good writer. I really, really hope that I can read it in a way that you appreciate. Or honestly, just pick up the book off your own shelf and read it. Cause... Anyway. <clears throat> there are a few men standing outside on the platform for the train, and this is disturbing the men who are standing inside. The rest were standing around in hatless, smoky little groups of twos and threes and fours inside the heated waiting room, talking in voices that, almost without exception, sounded collegiately dogmatic as though each young man, in his strident conversational turn, was clearing up once and for all some highly controversial issue, one that the outside, non-matriculating world had been bungling, provocatively or not, for centuries. Just... In that one super, super long sentence, Sandra is able to... Mm. I start this book club and I can't even talk about books because I love them so much. Even just this first sentence. This is how the story opens. Though brilliantly sunny, Saturday morning was overcoat weather again. Not just top coat weather. As it had been all week and everybody hoped it would stay for the big weekend. The weekend of the Yale game. I don't know, is that just me? Like, yeah, there were run-on sentences. Yeah, they last forever. But he has a way of describing people in situations that is just so accurate accurate and conversational while also being very succinct. Like, it feels very matter-of-fact, but I love it. I just, I love it. I read that first paragraph, this whole first paragraph, and I had to set the book down. I was like, why did I not start reading this? I'm doing NaNoWriMo this month. It's like, why did I not read this last month? So I can use it as inspiration for NaNoWriMo because I want to write like this. I want to write like this. 
The connotation that we get is that the men who are inside of the waiting room are unlikable. They are mightier than thou, and all they care about is sounding smarter than the people next to them. And the people who are waiting outside are the ones who are actually caring about the woman that they're waiting for on the trains. So our character that we're following at this point in the story, Lane, he is waiting on the platform. He's among the six or seven people who are sitting out on the platform. Or rather, he was and wasn't one of them because he's been kind of keeping apart, like within hearing distance, but not actually with them. And we see him take out a letter that he has received from his girlfriend, Franny, and it's something that he's read multiple times. And finally, the train rolls in, and all the girlfriends come, and Lane tries to like calm his face so that he doesn't look a little, like too passionate, but he can't help it. As soon as he sees her, he like shoots his arm up. He's like, "Oh, hey, hey, hey Franny!" And um, they have a cute little moment where she runs up to him and kisses him, and they bonk their heads on each other. And then we start to see things from Franny's perspective. Franny is feeling very overwhelmed and disappointed with where her life is. She doesn't want to just be another cog in the machine, I guess you could say. She thinks that everybody's fake and just that nothing that anybody does has purpose. I think that this comes from a scare that she had with her father. The beginning of the story, Lane is reading a letter from her, and the postscript is her saying that her father's tumor is benign, so there was a cancer scare, and I bet you that kind of made her think about her mortality a bit and what she was going to do with her life. And it's so, so relatable because the, one of the reasons why I started this channel is because I wanted to do something more with my life than just going to work every day. I want to make something of value and meaning and I feel like this channel is an opportunity to help me to become more productive, but then also to help anybody who decides to watch and get them to do more things, get you guys to do more things with your life as well, because I think this is a pretty common sentiment. And that's why I really like Granny. And so she picks up this book um, recommended by a religion professor that tells her about this mantra this Russian peasant learns on how to pray continuously. And Lane doesn't seem very into it. And is so upset with so upset and conflicted with where her life is going that she's actually getting sick when she's with her boyfriend. It's because her boyfriend is kind of this personification of everything she doesn't like about her society. So she excuses herself and then she passes out and Lane comes and retrieves her. When she comes to, he basically just says, I'm so glad that you're okay, you can relax, that we can have sex later. Quite a charmer. Initial thoughts. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. The writing was fantastic. Alright guys, thank you for watching to the end. That one was a bit of a whammy to edit. It's rendering right now and I have probably about five recordings of myself mixed into one in that video, but it was mostly because I loved the book so much that I just kept rambling on and on about it. I really hope that you guys take the time to read it if you haven't already. Next week I'll have a video for up to page 78, getting into the fanny sections. And I'm also going to have videos to the side, I think over here and over here, if you want to see what else I'm working on.